Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Luther King had a dream. He dreams of a colorless American society. He dreams of the promised land. Mahatma Gandhi also had a dream. He dreams of the, of the situation where there's no oppression, ladies and gentlemen. Barack Obama had a dream. He dreams of a clean government, a government clean from any form of corruption. Tunku Abdul Rahman had a dream, ladies and gentlemen. He dreams of a Malaysian society which, has, which is unified, which even amongst the 240 races and communities that we have in Malaysia are unified. I also have a dream, ladies and gentlemen. My dream is that we are more open, that we have awareness, ladies and gentlemen, that we are more tolerant of each other, for us and by ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to talk about today is something really simple, but at the same time it's extremely important. Post-independence generation, more laid back and cautious. Now before we move on and start talking about ourselves and analyze whether we are you know, laid back or cautious or not, let's actually let, let's, let's clear some clouds over what actually we, we mean by post-independence post generation being more laid back and cautious, ladies and gentlemen. Post-independence generation would refer to ourselves, would refer to us who never felt the brunt of the Japanese swords, would refer to us, ladies and gentlemen, who never heard the condescending words of the British, who was never ordered by the communist insurgents, ladies and gentlemen. Laid back, on the other hand, we refer to as in an instance where people are easygoing or people are relaxed. It refers to a situation where you are complacent of your surroundings and of your situation. It refers to a situation where you are uncritically satisfied with the state that you are in. Cautious, on the other hand, ladies and gentlemen, we refer to a person being careful to avoid potential problems and dangers. I've told you, ladies and gentlemen, that I have a dream. And the objective of my speech today, ladies and gentlemen, is to evaluate ourselves. Whether or not we are laid back, are we cautious, are we prepared for problems that you might and will face as a nation, ladies and gentlemen. I want to talk about five things. Firstly, we'll analyze the problem that we're facing or maybe the lack of problem that we're facing, which made us complacent in the first place. And I'll talk about four things. Love, ladies and gentlemen. L, O, V, and E. I'll explain what that means later on. But problems first. Because, ladies and gentlemen, we are already, as a Malaysian community, we are too complacent with the state that we're in. The petrol price, ladies and gentlemen, of the global community, people have to pay really expensive price for petrol and for oil. But for us Malaysians, we are subsidized. So we don't get, you know, we don't have to pay so much for petrol, while other people outside Malaysia have to pay so much just to get your car going for work, ladies and gentlemen. The same goes for food prices, ladies and gentlemen. Where in Malaysia, food prices aren't really determined by the market entirely. We have, you know, price ceilings and all those things, and all these government mechanisms, which helps us anyway, so that we don't have to suffer because of the volatile market itself. Education for us is free. Healthcare for us, ladies and gentlemen, is free. In other words, we don't suffer like those people outside Malaysia. We don't suffer like people who live in Russia. We don't suffer like people who live in Afghanistan, in Cambodia, or in Timor Leste, ladies and gentlemen. We go to gigs, we go to concerts, we go to parties, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, we are too engrossed about what we want to become to the extent that we forget what our country will become. And that's the most important thing, ladies and gentlemen, because according to Bill Clinton, ask not what your country gives to you, but what you give to your country. Ladies and gentlemen, what are the four things which I want to talk about? The first thing is in love is L, which stands for, well, love. It refers to, ladies and gentlemen, patriotism. Madonna put patriotism in a very funny way. She says, patriotism justifies the killing of yourself by a person who lives across the river just because the leader of that area has a conflict with the leader of your area even if you and that person aren't really in a conflict. But that's not really what I want to talk about ladies and gentlemen because patriotism is not just about killing, it's not just about going to war, it's not just about you know, going, uh, going here and there and telling people that my country is Malaysia, I'm going to kill anyone who thinks that I'm from Malaysia ladies and gentlemen. Now to analyze or to illustrate this, Let's take a walk 
in a typical pasar malam that you have in Malaysia. Imagine that you have or you see a Malaysian woman, nicely clad, in baju kurung with two kids, going to a stall by a Chinese who sells DVD for telling it. Original or not, that's not the issue. Now, then you have you know an Indian right there selling meat and stuff. So that's an instance, or that's a situation where you see Malaysians, even us being different from each other, and us you know, speaking different languages, and having different beliefs and ideologies, but at the same time, we can coexist with each other, ladies and gentlemen. But patriotism is not just about what you think and what you see. It's also what you believe in, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just about whether or not you can coexist with the Chinese and the Indians and the Malays and the Kadazans and the list goes on, but whether or not you trust them, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the most important thing which you want to talk about when you talk about patriotism. Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, is O, which stands for Obey, Order of the Law, ladies and gentlemen. A case in point, number one, you have the Forum on Islamic Conversion by the Bar Council. You have illegal rallies by the Hindra or the Hindu Rights Action Force, ladies and gentlemen. You have rallies on the election, on the justice system, rallies here and there, destroying roads and destroying other people's vehicles and stuff. Though I'm not really against freedom of expression and freedom of, of association, is that really the way, ladies and gentlemen, to forward your cause right here in Malaysia? Because what you have to also consider is whether or not your cost of doing all these studies is worth your demands, and whether or not your demands can be met and catered to by other means. Because, ladies and gentlemen, law is there for a reason, especially given the context of the Malaysian society, of the delicate fabric of the differences of community that you have in Malaysia, there are just things which you shouldn't be allowed to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, not just for the sake of the nation, but also for your own safety. And that's what we have to believe in, what we have to consider when you want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, order of the law in the Malaysian community. We're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, not just three races, or the Malays, Indians, and the Chinese in Malaysia. We're talking about 214 different communities and ethnicity right here in Malaysia. If you feel that you have the guts to talk about things which offends other races, then you should also know that they can actually do the same for you. It's not about what you want to say and how you say it is gentlemen. It's also considering what other people will feel when you say so, ladies and gentlemen. The third is V, ladies and gentlemen, which stands for values. What values are we talking about in the Malaysian community? We're talking about values like Islamic values, the cultural values, the Asian values that we had from where we came from, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, though we are different from each other, though the Malaysian community comprises of many ethnicities, we generally believe in the same, ladies and gentlemen, culture and in the same values. Values like tolerance, values like respect, ladies and gentlemen. And this, these values are things which you have to continue to believe in and should continue to practice and uphold. Because we cannot afford, ladies and gentlemen, to forego these values. We cannot afford to no longer be tolerant of other people. We can no longer afford to sit and say bad things about other people, of other beliefs and other religions and other races because of the fabric that we have in Malaysia, ladies and gentlemen. So the fact or the matter of the matter is you need to uphold these values, these Asian values, because of the, of the fact that we, of the society that we live in. And lastly, in love is the word E, which stands for the disgarment education. You have in this government 100,000 Malaysian children who can't write, who can't read, and who can't count, ladies and gentlemen. The dropout rates in the Malaysian schools increase, is increasing, especially in urban areas. And that is something dangerous. Because when students no longer feel the need to go and study, when students no longer feel the need to start learning to write and read and count, but rather focus on when to go to party and which gigs and concerts they want to go to, that's really a dangerous situation, not only for the person who chooses to go to the gigs, but also to us Malaysians, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, I call all of you today to believe in the bad values that we uphold as a Malaysian community, ladies and gentlemen. To believe in what Tunku believed when he, when he formed the Alliance Party. To believe, ladies and gentlemen, what leaders before us fought for. And that's what's important, ladies and gentlemen. Because it's not merely love, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just about patriotism. It's not just about order and, uh, and, and the law, ladies and gentlemen. It's not just about having the same values and going for, to schools 